I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. My father and I were night fishing for bass on Cherokee Lake on a bluff behind Panther Creek State Park. There are deer all in that park, and we heard something walking in the woods, and initially we thought it was a deer. But as it was getting closer, we could tell it wasn't a four-legged animal. It was bipedal. We looked at each other because where this area was, no person would be walking at night without a light. So this began to capture more and more of our attention. This area was very steep, hence the bluff name of this area, so it wouldn't be safe to be walking there at night without a light. At one point, it, whatever it was, fell and it sounded like someone fell and landed on their back and made a noise like getting your breath knocked out of you. We were using a black light for fishing, which provides very little light, but the black light I had also had a white light on it to light up structure on the shore, so we could see outlines, but no detail. This thing walked out to the edge of the water, and we were both on extremely high alert at this point, and it started wading out toward us, and since it was so steep, there it was in the deep water very quickly, and I started to dig out the spotlight and hook it up, and my dad yanked the troller motor up and said, We're getting out of here. All I can say is that it was walking on two legs, a very big frame, and a good swimmer. I cranked the motor and gave it all the gas I had. I had a 19-foot bass boat with a 150-horsepower motor. We were out of there quickly. We rode about a mile or so down the lake, and we just stopped and sat there. Didn't talk, but we were shook up. We couldn't fish, or didn't want to fish anymore that night, so we left. That was in the early 80s, and to this day when I asked my dad what he thought that was, and he will say, I don't want to know. I'm from north central Alabama. My dad's an electrician, and I've been working with him ever since I was little. I go to school and work at a job at a museum, and it was my day off, so I was helping him at a lake house. Before this happened, I would go out alone and do stuff around the house to finish it up, I would go on the back porch and take breaks and eat lunch. I would hear whooping sounds coming from the other side of the lake. Sometimes I would hear people talking, but I would think it would be neighbors. But come to find out the closest neighbors was a half mile away. So there was no way it could be them. I didn't think that Bigfoot would be near me. I thought they would be south or a little north of me in Tennessee. Okay, getting to the encounter. My dad was in the attic, and I was on the back porch of the lake house looking across the lake to the other side. I heard something running from the left of the lake that had woods. I see a deer running full speed, and then I see a black-looking... Well, at first I thought it was a black monkey that was chasing the deer. At first, I didn't know what to think, and this thing was fast. I was more focused on the monkey. Before I knew it, another one comes out from down the hill and tackles the deer into the water. I see the deer come up from the water, and the Bigfoot that's in the water comes up, grabs the deer's neck, and breaks it almost in half. The one on the shore does this, all I can say, is a victory yell and beat its chest. The one in the water throws the deer over its shoulder, and they walk up the hill. I know I was about 50 to 75 yards away. It took me a long time to process what I just saw and I had to think about what I saw and wanted to make sure that it wasn't a bear. I've seen bears before, but I know for a fact bears don't run this fast, nor do they walk up the hill on their own two feet. It wasn't a black panther. I know there has been some confirmed panthers in Alabama, but I looked them up and it did not look like them. They were big, like Shaq, but bigger, and I've seen him in person and I know they were bigger than him. They had black hair all over their body, and their hair had to be a few inches long, but I know there wasn't any on the face. I couldn't see the details of the faces from this far, but they looked like the Planet of the Apes monkeys. The arms were long, almost to the knees, and when they walked, it was like they were gliding on air. It was the weirdest thing. Let's just say, I didn't go back to that house alone. It took me a while to get up the nerve to go across the lake. 
But I did to see the spot they were in, and around the water had a tree limb that was seven foot nine, and the creature was just a hair under that. I don't know if it was taller because of the slope of the hill or what, but that's what I measured. We just finished up that lake house, and I'm not planning to go back there. I've always wanted to see them, but now, after seeing them, I don't ever want to see it again. It was surreal. It was like I've seen them on TV and heard podcasts about them, but then you finally see them? It blew my mind. My name is Sebastian. I've had a couple of experiences in Illinois and one in Idaho. The first instance took place when my brother and I were walking through the woods out by Staunton Lake in Illinois. We went down the spillway and were walking the trails back behind the lake. We were about a mile into the woods and my brother decided he wanted to stop and rest, so I went to walk a little farther ahead. I walked maybe 50 yards away from him before I realized it was dead silent, which it wasn't before. There were birds chirping and squirrels running around and just sounds of activity maybe five minutes prior to me realizing. After I realized it was quiet, I slowed my pace and took maybe 15 more steps before I heard a branch break up the hill to my right. And right after I heard the break, there was a low-toned grunt that came afterwards. I was 13 at the time, and my little brother was 9. I heard the grunt and immediately took off running back towards my brother. I came barreling past him, and all I could say was, RUN! We ran all the way back to the road and made the mile walk back into town. He kept questioning me about why we ran, and I told him about the noise. He didn't believe me. Well, three or four weeks later, we were at the same lake. It was about 9.30 to 10 at night. We were night fishing. We weren't having any luck, so we decided to throw rocks and sticks and anything else we could find across the little cove into the woods on the other side. We had a fairly bright lantern that lit up the other side of the cove, but just to the base of the tree line. We couldn't see anything past the tree line. Maybe 20 minutes after we stopped throwing rocks and everything, we heard some movement just out of sight on the other side of the cove and then rocks started coming out of the tree line towards us. None made it to us, they just hit the water in front of us. At the time, I thought it was just people. That's still a possibility. It wasn't super remote. I'm not sure what happened out at the lake, and I'll never know for sure. But my experience in Idaho is a little different. I'm getting goosebumps just typing about it. In 2016, I moved to Idaho with the girl I was seeing at the time. I was 19. We moved to Idaho Falls in southeast Idaho. Well, it was late September and my girlfriend's parents and I got into a little argument and I wasn't wanting to stay there that night. So I packed a blanket and a pillow into our 2001 Honda Accord and drove about eight miles outside of town into the mountains. It was a bright moon and plenty of stars, no light pollution, so it was very well lit. I eventually found this rock road off the main road and took it for about another mile. And then a red dirt road came off the rock road and went back further towards the mountains. I had never been there before, so it was all new terrain, so I decided to take it. It was full of twists and turns and it eventually led me down the side of the mountain on the back side from where I came in, and it had a small river running through it. I got down there and decided that was where I was going to sleep for the night. I shut the car off and the lights. I didn't have any service on my phone, so I was playing games and smoking cigarettes in the car to try to pass time. It was about midnight. Now from the front of my car to the creek bank was about six feet, and I could tell from looking at that there was a small drop off from the bank down to the creek, maybe three feet or so, and there were bushes along the bank. The creek itself was maybe 15 feet away. Anyway, Something told me to look up from my phone. I'm not sure why I did it, or what possessed me to look up, but something told me to look up. And when I did, I seen this very large, hairy, man-like looking thing standing with its back turned to me in the creek, maybe 20 feet away, just into the creek. It was a dark brown, not quite black. Hair was maybe two inches in length. I didn't see arms past the elbows at first. Then I realized they were kind of bent up like its hands were by its mouth, so I couldn't see the forearms. 
I'm not sure if it was eating fish or what it was doing, but I got terrified. So I flipped the headlights of the car on. When I did that, it instantly dropped to the ground, quicker than I've ever seen. It was there, then it wasn't. And in a matter of maybe two seconds, it went 20 feet to peeking at me through the bushes right at the edge of the bank, six feet away from the front of my car. I could see its eyes and the skin around the eyes, but nothing else. Massive eyes, almost like baseballs, but just a little smaller. We locked eyes for what felt like an eternity, but in reality probably was no more than three or four seconds. After those few seconds went by, I started the car and slowly started to reverse. It didn't move, flinch, or nothing. Just kept my face in its sight. I backed up a little bit to where I was able to drive off and floor it and sped up the mountain, almost rolling off in the process of trying to get away. I'm six foot five and 280 pounds. I've been training in martial arts for the last nine years now. I know I can hold my own against certain things. I was the same size at 19, I'm 22 now, and I felt helpless, like I could have fought with everything I had and it not even register on this thing's scale, not even phase it. It was immense. I've been 15 feet away from a grizzly before while in a vehicle, and I thought that was massive, but the grizzly had nothing on what I saw. My shoulder width is just a little over two feet. The shoulder width of this was easily two or three times mine, and it was easily a foot and a half to two feet taller than I was if I had to judge it. The back wasn't necessarily like cut and lean, but I could tell there was a fair amount of muscle there. The back of the arms looked muscular and it had a cone-shaped head. I have shared my Illinois encounters with other people, but never my Idaho encounter. Sebastian November 4th, 2006, Willow Creek, Idaho Falls. Me and my family were driving through the foothills above Idaho Falls near Willow Creek when my sister, fiance, daughter, and nephew all said they had seen something off to the side of the road. I stopped and turned around so I could shine the lights from the Bronco on whatever it was. When we got turned around, the lights from the vehicle couldn't hit it, so I decided to step out with a flashlight. When I shined the light on it, it stood up on its hind legs about 30 feet from me. It was standing in a burrow pit and it was at least a foot taller than me. I'm six feet tall. When I seen it, I started yelling at it and it ducked down. Every time I would stop making noise, it would start to raise its head again. When I backed up and gone into the Bronco, it jumped up and ran after us and chased us quite a ways. We all seen it, but we could not make out any facial features. I've heard stories in the past from friends and family of sightings in the same area, but never paid much attention. I'm an avid hunter and fisherman. I spend a lot of time in the outdoors, and I've hunted and fished in this area all my life. I've seen elk, deer, antelope, badger, and bear. Just about everything that has walked, crawled, or swimmed. But I've never seen anything like what I seen that night. It was bigger than any bear I have ever seen. And I hunt the Selway here, and there's a large population of bear. And what we seen that night was not a bear. After we seen it and we were a ways down the road, we stopped and rolled down the windows. And you could hear some kind of scream or howling noise. Something like I have not heard before. Another time, it sounded like a baby whimpering down by the bridge. We tried to see what it was, but we could not. We did report it to the sheriff's department, but nothing was found. Several different times, we had seen stuff standing on hillsides, but could not make out what it was. Additional details. The creature was huge, with extremely wide shoulders. It was over half as wide as the Bronco. Given a two-foot-deep burrow pit, the creature's height is estimated to be about nine feet. The creature chased their Bronco, which was going as fast as 30 miles an hour. It ran alongside the vehicle in the borrow pit and crossed the road behind the vehicle at some points. The witness stated that the road was graveled and winding, making even 30 miles per hour difficult to drive safely. The witness could hear it making a strange growling whining noise while running with the Bronco. The creature's arms were quite long, more than half the total body length. The hair was very thick and a little bit longer than a bear's. 
While running, the creature was looking in at the vehicle's occupants from no more than 20 feet away. The creature was very large and fast. It had no trouble keeping up with the vehicle. All the passengers were terribly frightened, screaming and crying with fear. The female witness mentioned another incident in July 2006, which may be connected to this one. While driving with her fiancé and his daughter in the mountains of Clark County, the daughter looked out the window and said, There's a naked black man running through the hills. The two adults paid no attention to this remark and ascribed it to childhood fancy. In retrospect now, both adults wonder if she might have seen the same or a similar creature encountered in November 2006. The two locations are about 60 miles apart. Family reports several encounters over several months. Harrison County, Ohio. My name is Christy Spruill. I'm 39 years old. I live in Sio, Ohio. In the summer of 2011, my friend was staying in a tent in my yard for about two months. She said she could hear something big walking toward her tent. Then one night, I was in the house on Facebook around 2 a.m. and my girlfriend was on her laptop in her tent on Facebook. She messaged me to come outside right away, that something was sniffing loudly and breathing heavy walking around her tent. I walked outside thinking she was just freaking herself out, thinking she was hearing things. I kind of laughed it off, opened the door and yelled if she was okay. She yelled for me to come to the tent, so I grabbed a flashlight and walked down. I didn't see anything. If there was something there, it ran away. I told her it was a deer. She was not convinced. In the summer of 2012, both of my daughters, 16 and 17, came in the house after taking our dog out around 11 p.m., shaking and scared, saying they seen something really big standing by our tree in the backyard, which leads to the woods. Then again, walking to the house up the driveway around midnight, came in scared and said they seen the same thing walking around our pool, then walked into the woods. I never really believed them. I tried to convince them that there was nothing there, that it was their imagination because they overheard my friend talking who camped in my yard. I told them the dog would bark and growl if something was out there. Then, on November 27, 2012, around 11.45 p.m., I took our five-month-old pup outside to go do his thing. I walked out the door, turned right with the pup on a leash toward the wood line, maybe 20 or 30 feet from the door. As I started to get closer, maybe three feet away, I heard something big shuffling in the briars. I turned, thinking it was a deer. When I turned around, it stood straight up. It was very big, very tall, and very wide. My guess would be at least seven feet tall. Very broad chest, which was all I could see besides the outline of its body. It was very dark, and it blended right in with the darkness, except the chest or stomach. Not sure which. It happened so fast. As it stood up, that part of it was light. It showed in the moonlight. I screamed very loudly and ran to the house, dragging the pup behind me, which I don't believe the pup even realized it was there. It scared me so badly, I was shaking and crying. My husband and 21-year-old son, who also did not believe the stories from my daughters and my friend, went outside with a small flashlight and a knife for protection to try to find out what it was. My son said it was still out there and that it was behind the tire swing. He seen its shadow and it ran from him toward the spring on the hillside, which is nothing but briars. He said he couldn't see it after that, but it was there because it quit running, but he couldn't see it or hear it. He had this eerie feeling it was staring right at him. They both came back inside. My son had the same description as me. Very, very tall, very, very wide but he only seen the back of it as it ran up the hill into the briars. My husband thinks it was curious, whatever it was, because it snooped around but ran away. I truly believe that it was a Bigfoot. It was hanging around for over a year that we know of. Christy Spruill Close Encounter on Dairy Farm March 1982, Deersville, Ohio I worked on a dairy farm between Deersville and Tippecanoe, Ohio, in Harrison County during high school. It was March 1982, about 5 in the morning. 
There was a heavy frost on the ground, a full moon, and I could see fairly clearly due to the moonlight. I went to the outside paddock area to feed the replacement dairy heifer and started dumping the grain into the trough attached to the board fence when I heard a low grunt. The kind of grunt that someone makes from being in one position too long as you stand up. When I looked up, this figure was in the process of standing up. It was on the other side of a small creek that ran through the paddock approximately 50 yards away. The figure was standing next to the wooden hay feeder. It stood there for a few seconds, then walked towards the other end of the pen closest to the woods. I only saw it for about 5 to 10 seconds, but could hear it walking for approximately 30 to 45 seconds. I heard the sounds of footsteps crunching on the frost as it moved to the other end of the pen, and then heard the squeaking sound of the fence being pushed down. The cattle were not spooked at all during this encounter, and continued to eat. After we were finished milking, I went over to the hay feeder and couldn't find any prints on the ground as the frost was gone. The figure appeared to be approximately seven feet tall, which I estimated was a foot taller than me. I have hunted and farmed the area for years. My parents' farm is approximately five miles from where my incident took place. I have had two other possible incidents while bow hunting. The first occurred while hunting from a tree stand in a hayfield in 2010. It was the end of October or first part of November, and it was right at dusk. I watched three does enter the hayfield and start to eat the grass. After approximately two to three minutes, I heard a scream that I can't explain. The three does immediately ran off through the hayfield and into the woods. While still in my tree stand, whatever it was kept screaming for 15 minutes, which caused me to leave the area. The second incident was in 2011, during bow season, while hunting the same place with my teenage son. While using a doe call, I heard something walk down over the hill through the trees. I watched and listened for a few minutes and could hear the sound of something urinating. Whatever it was did not move again. When it was too dark to hunt, we left the area. Investigator James Thompson contacted the witness by phone and arranged to meet to talk about the encounter. The witness and James met to discuss the details of that morning in 1982. At the time of the encounter, the witness was in high school and working part-time at a local dairy farm. It was around 5 a.m. on a Sunday morning in March with a full moon out and he was going about the pre-milking routine of feeding the livestock. Located behind the barn was a small shed inside a fenced area where the young heifers were kept. That morning, the witness was carrying two five-gallon buckets, one with silage, the other with grain. As he approached the gate, he found the heifers all bunched up in the corner by the gate, which is out of the ordinary. They would normally be lying over by the hay feed rack. He made his way through them and dumped the pile of silage in the trough. A grunting noise caught his attention. It sounded like a person rising from being down in a crouching position for too long. He looked in the direction of the sound toward the hay rack 75 feet away and saw a 7 to 8 foot tall bipedal creature coming to a standing position. They stood looking at each other for 5 to 10 seconds before the creature turned and started walking away into the darkness and out of sight. There was a full moon that morning with a coating of frost on the ground. While the creature was facing him, the witness said that due to the distance and available light, the creature was dark in color. He was unable to make out any facial features, but did say it had broad shoulders and an absence of a neck. When it turned and started walking, its footsteps made a crunching sound on the ground. He was looking at the side profile of the head, expecting to see a snout, so he could identify it as a bear but the side view of the head showed a flat face. As it walked, the witness noted that its arms were long and its hands hung down by its knees. As the creature disappeared into the darkness, the witness heard a creaking of the four-foot-tall wire fence at the back side of the pen as the creature stepped over it. The witness went about finishing his chores. When the milking was done, he went back out to the hay rack to see if he could find any evidence of tracks or possible hair where it had stepped over the fence. Unfortunately, nothing was found. Hunters Encounter 8-Foot-Tall Bigfoot September 4, 2010 
Sile, Ohio. My cousin and I were leasing hunting land in Harrison County near Sile, Ohio. It was on or about September 4th, 2010. It was approximately 9 a.m. and we were clearing our four-wheeler trails. The birds were chirping, squirrels were jumping, and wildlife was moving around. Suddenly, we noticed that all woodland sounds had stopped. It was very odd to us, so much so that we both stopped what we were doing and stood motionless. As we looked around, we saw a tall, dark figure, approximately 50 yards away, standing behind a large tree. It was approximately 8 feet tall, with hair covering its body. It was standing upright and was looking out from around the tree. At first, we could only see about half of its face and part of its shoulder and left arm. We were both armed with pistols, which we quickly had in our hands. The stare down lasted approximately 30 to 45 seconds. I asked my cousin in a low voice, Are you seeing what I'm seeing? He replied yes in a somewhat shaky voice, and I said, What is it? He said, You know what it is. We both knew it was a Bigfoot. A few seconds later, it ran perpendicular to us. We got glimpses of it crashing through the thick brush as it was moving small trees out of its way. It ran completely upright. We saw it running for approximately 50 to 60 yards before it disappeared into the swamp. Even though the hare was standing up on the back of our necks, we slowly walked over to where it crashed through the woods. The small saplings it ran through were completely broken and bent over. We could not wait to get out of the woods, so we fled the area. We did not see it again that hunting season, but made sure we were always well armed, even during bow season. Five years later, the witness and his family had rented a cabin across from the swamp and railroad tracks, about one and a half miles away. His son and a friend were doing some night fishing at the pond below the cabin. The pond was illuminated by light from the cabin. They noticed what they described as a dark shadow on the other side of the pond, about 60 yards away. They decided to move back towards the cabin when it crouched down. They yelled, and their mother came outside in time to hear a loud, howling scream, as the mother put it, and she took them back in the cabin for the night. Animal Stolen by Tall Bipedal Black Creature February 2019, Cadiz, Ohio One night, I took my dog out at about 2.45 a.m. While we were outside, he seen something that scared him so bad that he drug me to the house. He acted as if I couldn't get the door open fast enough. When we got in and I got the door shut, he turned quickly and stared at the door as if whatever it was was going to come through that door and get us. He's an Irish wolfhound and he was very shaken. So, after I took my son to school that morning, I decided to look for tracks in the snow to see if I could find out what it was that scared him. This is when I found some unusual tracks, lots of them like the ones we seen on our property a year ago. So I took a video and a couple of still shots, and then I called Jim Thompson to come and look at them. A few days before, we heard a very loud whistle-like howl. It was not a coyote or fox. My neighbor always used to say that she seen something similar where she lives, and a gentleman from the Cadiz Fire Department said that he had heard some of the same sounds as we had right nearby where we live. Investigator James Thompson was introduced to the witness. She brought with her two blaster casts that she had made of the tracks she found in the snow. She did well even while casting in a poor environment like snow. The tracks did show detail of an adult and juvenile size print. By reviewing pictures of the adult track and the area where it was found, I was able to determine there was a stride of five feet between tracks. I also found out that leading up to this incident, they had lost chickens and rabbits while they were safely penned up. The chickens were kept in a 10 foot by 10 foot by 6 foot high dog pen with chicken wire fastened together with zip ties across the top of the pen to protect from hawks. The rabbits were in rabbit hutches placed inside a like structure. The hutches and both pens were secured with a dog clip on the door's hasps. The chicken pen was found with the door secure, but the wire stretched across the top split open with the broken zip ties lying on the ground in the pen. All the chickens were missing. 
the rabbit pen was found with the clip removed from the door and the hutches with two rabbits missing. There was also a lot of rabbit fur on the ground in the pen. As she further checked on her other animals, she found her large 100-pound dog alive but refusing to come out of his doghouse. The last animals she had to check on were her alpacas and sheep. She found them huddled against the back wall of their enclosure. Since my first investigation of the property began, there have been a couple more incidents that occurred. A year ago, I was called to the property to look at some tracks in the snow. These were found to be of an indeterminate source. The snow had melted away too much detail. This month marks the anniversary of the first incident. I showed up to place cameras on the property on January 13, 2020. When she came to the door, she asked me if someone had called me to come over. I replied, nope. Why? The night before, she was taking her two dogs out to do their business. One dog ran back inside, the other one was on a leash, and as she bent down struggling to fasten its collar to the tie-out line, she looked over to see something crouching 30 yards away. It suddenly stood up and took off running. She described it as black with two massive legs. It brushed by a pine tree branch that I measured at eight feet off the ground. I investigated the area in all directions but could not find evidence of any identifiable prints in the hard soil. The property is just below a ridge line, and the area around and below are heavily wooded. Along the bottom of the property is a creek that flows into larger ones, and then the Ohio River 25 miles away. There are large tracts of wooded areas of over 1,500 acres that are inaccessible to the public due to private ownership along with large tracts of coal company property. I have found by talking to local residents that there are past incidents that have very strange circumstances. Thanks for listening. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting or encounter and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at BigfootCaseFiles at mail.com or go to my website, BigfootCaseFiles.com, to fill out an encounter form. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you.